Hey, what's up guys? This is Andre Strepo and welcome back to a new video. Today we're talking about the Sony a7S III. Really impressive camera, so let's just get into this video right now. So if this is your first time here, I'm a photographer and videographer based in Houston, Texas. And on this channel, I love to do a whole bunch of photo and video related stuff, including gear. So now let's talk about the Sony a7S III. So jumping into number one, and that is low light. The low light on this camera is seriously so impressive. It's the best I've used on any camera across the board, even the R6, which I reviewed uh, in my last video. The R6 had really good low light performance, but I can honestly say that this one blows it out the water. The fact that ISO like 30,000 looks like ISO 1600 on my camera, which is a 5D Mark IV, which is what I'm filming on right now. It's a little bit older. It's not geared as a video camera, but still it does pretty good video like you're seeing right now. You know, it's fine. But the fact that, you know, technology and everything packed into this camera can honestly go up to like 100,000 ISO is insane. One of the things that I really love about this camera is how fine the noise is. You know, on my cameras, it's really large and really noticeable. So the higher you get up in those ISOs, you can start to see the noise, but it's really fine. And I feel like it'd be really easy to remove in post, but the fact that I don't think I'll ever be filming stuff, you know, realistically past like 12,800 ISO, whether it's like a dark wedding scene or like a dark room for real estate, uh, that is more than plenty. And the fact that it looks clean is just, it's all you need, honestly. But the fact that you can go up to those really high ISOs and still look pretty clean is really awesome to have. Next, jumping into the autofocus. I was really impressed by the autofocus from this camera. So I primarily use Canon cameras and they have great autofocus, but using the Sony a7S III, it's honestly just as good, if not better, especially when you're filming videos, so many handy features like the eye tracking, which works so well, and also just the subject tracking in general. I was in the backyard with my dog and I just, you know, tapped on my dog and she even jumped and like, just was running around the backyard and it tracked her just fine. Just simply pressing my finger there and it would track them at no problem. So that was so impressive. Because honestly, it's one of those things where now you don't have to worry about you know certain things like, is it gonna track this person? Am I gonna lose focus in the shot? You can focus on other things like composition, perspective, and things like that to make your shots even better. So I'm happy to say that the autofocus is incredible and reliable. This is my first time using a Sony camera. And for most of the time when I would see other people review Sony cameras, they're like, oh, the Ibis is okay or whatever. But man, the Ibis in this camera is really awesome. Emily forgot her phone in the car, so gotta go and get it. Here we can do a quick running test, stabilization test, handheld. So there's a standard and the active for the IBIS. And when you have it on active and you're doing handheld shots, it's super clean. So I would definitely recommend having it on that setting. I do believe it crops in just a little bit, but I didn't notice any wobbles or any weird warping whenever I was using it. And I'm using a 16 to 35. And so everything I shot on it handheld was really awesome. And I am such a fan of handheld shots. Like I use a gimbal for real estate work and other videos and stuff like that because my camera has no sort of stabilization. So you have to do that route, but I would love to do more stuff handheld. Like, you know, if I can just hold this camera, which the flip screen bonus, if I can do more of my shots just like this and it and the camera can reduce all of those wobbles, I, I, that's my style, run and gun all the way. And so using active mode with the image stabilization in here was awesome. So then if you're on a gimbal or, or maybe you don't need stabilization so much, you can throw it on standard or just have it off uh, so it doesn't crop in in there also. So next, let's quickly jump into the log profiles. Again, this is my first time using a Sony camera and I've only had it for about a week. And so all the gigs that I shot this week that you've seen, I shot in just a normal profile because I was already a little nervous that I was using a camera I haven't used before, did a little bit of research on it. And so I didn't want to risk also not being able to grade this stuff. And so now testing out some just personal footage, I was able to try out S-Log3 and it was actually really easy to grade. I'm not a pro colorist or anything whatsoever. I was basically just doing these adjustments in Lumetri, 
Lumetri, Lumetri, and the results were pretty nice. I just wanted to get back to a Rex 709 color and it looked really good. The dynamic range in S-Log3 is really nice and I was super happy that it graded pretty easily and that my computer could run it. And of course, for the sake of this review, now we're filming on the Sony a7S III and S-Log3 in my studio setup, so you can kind of compare it to what a Canon 5D Mark IV with a 24 mil. This only has a neutral profile, doesn't have log or anything like that. So really interested to see how the differences are gonna be between this and that. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this. Which brings me to the next one, uh, the files. How is it like working with this files? Because, oh man, I made the mistake of shooting in a certain format that I wish I didn't because now my computer can't run them. So this is what I had to do. Okay, so let's jump into the file format. Here, let's see, can you guys see that? Yeah. So on the A7S III, you have a variety of formats to shoot in. You have XAVCHS 4K and XAVCS 4K. So I shot all of my gigs this week on this format, which is H.265, which I wish I'd done my homework previously because even my spec'd out 16 inch MacBook Pro couldn't even open the files. Basically I dragged it in Premiere and I went to go click on one and the whole thing froze and I was like, oh crap. So then I started shooting all my stuff in XAVC S 4K, which is H.264 I believe, and my computer had no problem really running it. So once I started putting more clips on the timeline and grading heavily, then it's when it started, my fans started to turn on, but still it was running the footage pretty smoothly. Uh, so that's really awesome because it's 10 bit and 4K. So that's, that's, that's perfect. <laughs> you can also shoot with proxies in here, which I didn't do again, a little bit new to Sony. So that's why I didn't do any of that. And then once you pick your file format, you go down to movie settings and then now you can change your frame rate of course, but then also this is your record setting. So in that format, you have hundred megabits per second at 422 10 bit, which is what I was using. That's what you see in these grading examples, which looks great whole bunch of color data and your stuff's not gonna really fall apart at all. Uh, and then you have the 4208-bit and 4208-bit at 60 megabytes. But if you want the best quality in that codec with not a huge file size, use that one. And I know what you're thinking, what about the 4K 120? Ah, I know, I'm so bummed because I did not have a card that was fast enough to do that. You need to note that you need a memory card that is fast enough to handle these write speeds and you know the data out of this camera. And so I thought I had this uh, Hoodman Steel 128 gigabyte V60 uh, rating three that even says 8K on it. I'm like, oh, that's gonna be fine. But no, it has to be at least a V90 rating SD card for you to use 4K 120. So super bummed about that, but that's like the number one thing people were basing their reviews on it. So I wanted to talk about the other stuff because honestly, 1080p 120 looked great. If you need 4K 120, you'll need at least a V90 rated SD card. Quickly, let's talk about the photos. Obviously, this is not a photo geared camera, but I wanted to test it out because, you know, I, are they useless? Are they okay? Are they actually usable? And it's kind of in the middle. They're not terrible, but 12 megapixels obviously doesn't sound like a lot. And you can tell the difference from like what I shoot on my camera, which is 30 megapixels. But I think that it's honestly fine for like, let's say you're shooting some stuff quickly at the end of a video shoot for some social media content. Whenever I looked at the files in Lightroom, um, at a glance, they look, you know, still really high resolution. It's until you zoom in, that's where you'll notice kind of like, oh, well, this is like a little bit lower resolution photo. But honestly, like, you know, stuff that you're gonna post online and if it's just kind of like personal content, daily content, you'd be fine with that. Like, if you were shooting YouTube videos and you needed to shoot a thumbnail for your video, you can do that on this, no problem. That's gonna still look great. But would I shoot portraits, weddings, or anything like that that might be printed? On this camera, no, that's not gonna turn out well. So that's just my little bit on the photo side. And lastly, I just wanted to touch on the real world experience of using this camera. So coming from Canon, using like the 5D Mark IV, EOS R, R6, this had a bit of a small learning curve because I've never used one before and the menu systems are laid out differently and there's so, so many menus that you can just endlessly change things. But to initially get started, it wasn't too difficult. I watched like one or two videos on how to set it up and how to get going. And I started recording and you know shooting with it, no problem. Um, aside from the file thing that I wish I knew in advance. But I was really happy using it. I honestly thought I wasn't gonna like it, but I think that the way that they're going with their cameras and especially how everything looks out of it and the fact that none of their stuff, you know, had any sort of overheating issues, uh, it was really reliable and that's the biggest thing. So happy to say that using it in the field, it was really nice.
And so finally, who is this camera for? Who is this camera geared for? Is this meant for the hobbyist, the professional, the intermediate? And so I think it's definitely for the pro videographer. One of the things to know is that this is not a photo geared camera. It is most definitely a video geared camera. So if you're more heavily a photographer, but you do a little bit of videos, I don't think this is gonna be the camera for you, unless you plan to have two bodies, which is actually something I'm starting to lean towards because as long as I've had this camera, I was using this for video, my 5D for photo, Photos, and that combo was pretty cool. One of the things I liked about that is I didn't have to like change my photo setup to like quickly put it on a gimbal, balance it. It was nice having two cameras for specific things where I could just use them instantly and have them ready for whatever was happening. So I definitely think this is geared towards the pro videographer that needs 4K, high resolutions, high frame rates, all of that that's packed in here. Uh, if you're a hobbyist, you know, just now getting into video or maybe just making YouTube videos, I think this is gonna be totally overkill. So if you're a videographer looking to step up your video game to a professional level, this is gonna be the camera for you. But just note, the camera isn't all you need. Obviously you need a really good lens and this is a 16 to 35. So this combo right here is like a one and done setup, honestly. Uh, whether you're a professional videographer, wedding filmmaker, real estate videographer, uh, pro video content creator, flip screen is awesome. Uh, whatever your needs are, it can be done with this. Just know you'll have to invest in some you know, faster memory cards, a good laptop that can edit this stuff, uh, and some sort of backup system because the files are pretty big, especially once you start filming a lot, but you will not be disappointed using the Sony a7S III. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment down your thoughts on what you thought of the Sony a7S III. Is this gonna be your next upgrade? Do you like it? Do you hate it? And subscribe if you haven't already. I would love for you guys to be a part of my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. What do you guys think of the new space? I decided to change things up because even though I really liked my previous you know, YouTube set, it was not very, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say? It wasn't very smart how I was laid out in my office. Basically, my desk was in the middle of the room taking up a whole bunch of space and then part of this space was useless. And so it was getting really crowded in here and I've always wanted this direct setup where I have my desk here and it's easier to talk to the camera I feel like because it's just more laid out naturally and I'm a fan of it. I think it's getting there. Uh, you know, I kind of like the shelf over here, but we need something up in this space. So let me know what you think I should put over here. Maybe like a big print or something, like one of my favorite photos. We'll see, but all right, that's it. See ya.